Praise the Lord. Um, before the service is over, we're going to gather around. We're going to pray for Robin. But there's some things that are on my heart that I want to share with you first concerning beginning, you know, concerning with, you know, the, the will of God. What is the will of God? Not in just this situation. Now, I'm not even, when I ask this question, I'm not speaking of any situation. But what is, if you were to define the will of God, what, what would you define that as? Um, I know that there's so many um, in, the, in the faith movement, in the faith teachings, that take these things and twist them, you know, to, to just make a, make a good confession out of it or, or, or whatever, you know, as they've done with, you know, with faith. Um, we understand faith is just believing God, believing in the Lord. You know, to, to us, that, that is what faith is. That's what the definition you know, of, of faith really is. But there are those who take faith and they make it to be some almost like some mystical force. You know, that faith of itself is like a force. You know, they say God created the heavens and the earth, you know, through, through faith. But the scripture says about faith, says by, we understand that, you know, by faith that the worlds were formed by the word of God. And it tells us in the word of God that God created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be light. You know, and there was light, and he spoke the things into existence. So when we, by faith, he created the heavens and the earth, you know, it's, we say, by faith we understand that they were created by the word of God. It's not saying that they were created by some mystical force called faith, but it's saying that, you know, we believe God. That's how we know it was created by the word of God, because it's written in the word of God, and we believe the word of God. And, you know, they've twisted, twisted that to you know, twisted faith to, you know, be some type of strange force, you know, uh, or some strange power of itself, you know, to do something. Uh, how how um, are the teachings that say you believe something, and if you believe it enough and not doubt, you know, it, it'll come into being, you know, in talks, they talk about stuff in the spirit world, and all that kind of stuff, and they, they make faith to be something it's really not. Um, but we understand that faith is, you know, just believing God. But I've, you know, come to understand that the will of God is, you know, they've done much of that with the will of God. They've taken the will of God and made it to be some force of itself. You know, that, you know, that the, the will of God is, is doing this. You know, if this has happened, well, it's the will of God. You know, all things that happen are the will of God. But I was thinking about, you know, this. I mean, many things maybe that I might say tonight might... You know, be construed as am I saying you know like what the faith teaching is saying you know no I'm not I was thinking about you know everything that they teach everything that they preach and all their ways and, and all of those all of that you know garbage and I thought of what the apostle you know I think it was Peter and John said to to Simon you know when he asked you know it, that you know, he gave them money you know for the that they would give him the power to fill people with the Holy Ghost. And Peter and Simon, they said unto him, he said, you got neither part nor lot in this matter. And nothing that the faith teachings and the faith movement has said or ever done comes into play with what I'm you know, going to speak of tonight. You know, no matter what you've heard about the, you know, those things, you know, confess it and believe it and receive it, forget about it. Forget about it. Throw, throw it you know, out of your minds. You know, put it in the error slot. You know, that those things are a lie. But I was thinking about the will of God. What is the will of God? I remember you know, a man telling me one time, he said, you know, if, it's, if it's the will of God, it'll happen. If it's the will of God, it'll happen. And right then and there, you know, I didn't say anything to him, but I was saying that's not how it works. You know, if it's the will of God, it'll just, it'll just happen. There, there are things that God does, things that God does, you know, by his hand. But the will of God is just what God desires to do. You know, what God would, you know, purpose, you know, for himself to do. Or, you know, how he would use someone or what he would accomplish. But you think of, 
you think of this, say there's a project, you know, that you have at your house, something that you want to do. You have a will to do that. You have a will to, to get that done. But nothing ever gets accomplished until you, you know, get up in that you do it. You know, if I want to build a fence, I have a will to build a fence, but that fence don't get built until I get my shovel out, you know, and post hole diggers and the posts and the concrete and all the things required to build a fence. It doesn't get built until those things take place. You know, in, in thinking of the will of God, I think of it similar to that. There, God's will is the things that he would do. But they say, well, if it's the will of God, it'll happen. You know, that if it's the will of God, nothing can, you know, come, you know, nothing can stop it from happening almost because it's the will of God. But you can look across this earth and you can see all kinds of things that are not the will of God that happen all the time. You look at, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, in the garden. You know, some people say that God knew about that. This really isn't even, that's not really even the issue here. Was that his will? You know, if they say if it's God's will, it'll happen. If it wasn't God's will that they would eat of the, uh, eat of the fruit, if that was true, then it would never have happened. But sometimes things happen that are not the will of God. I, you know, my, the first thing, you know, that I go of, go to, is over in Peter. Peter, the third verse, the third chapter and the ninth verse. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Second Peter, third chapter and ninth verse. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I look at that, the Lord, not willing that any should perish. It's not his will that any person would perish. He hasn't purpose that, that some people would go to hell, some people would go to heaven. No, it's not his will that any should perish. And I believe that's taken from the Old Testament where the Lord says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But the Lord, I mean, it's, it's clear, we understand that, that it's not his will, that any should perish. But Jesus, you know, speaking of eternal life in heaven, he said, straight, you know, is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, you know, go in there. So in these two scriptures, we see that there are many that do perish. But it's not the Lord's will that they perish. Just because it's the Lord's will doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But in salvation, the Lord's will is that everyone would be saved. That everyone would come to the knowledge of the truth. But for that... You know, God has his will, but it requires that they simply believe the gospel, put their trust in Jesus Christ. And in other cases, it, you know, it's that, you know, a, a man or woman of God sent by God would go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when those things take place, then the will of God is fulfilled. Over in, in Hebrews, Hebrews, this is the... Uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and let's go 10th chapter and 5th verse. It says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Now, you know, we know, you know, God had given us a record throughout the Old Testament of everything that he would do. Everything that would be accomplished in salvation. And we understand that to be God's eternal purpose. You know, that, that's like God's eternal will. That's what he willed from the very beginning. You know, when he said, let us make man in our image. And everything we read through the prophecies and all those things is how God would, you know, concerning Christ, is how God would fulfill his eternal purpose. How he would fulfill his will. But it's not just going to happen because God willed it. 
It's going to happen because there was one that said, Lo, I come to do thy will. The one who was born of a virgin. The one who was the word that was in the beginning with God and was God. When he came to this earth and, and you know, was incarnated, you know, grew up, you know, and he grew in stature and favor with the Lord. And he comes to that place where he, you know, even at such a young age of you know, 14, he said, I must be about my father's business. You know, all through his life he wanted to do you know, the, the Father's will, to, to please the Father. But when he came, you know, to understanding God's purpose for him, you know, the, the entire reason that he was born, the entire reason he came to this earth, you know, he says, Lo, I come to do thy will. In the garden of, I believe it was the garden of Gethsemane, that he said, If there be any other way possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. In the will of God depended on if Jesus would surrender himself to do his will. You look through any, you know, place in the scriptures, any place in the Bible, you know, and almost every time you see the will of God, you see what God wanted to do, you see what God had purposed, you know, from, from salvation even to down to the, to the smallest things. And so oftentimes, you know, I believe almost in every case, you find, you know, a man... ...or a woman of God who obeyed the Lord. You find a man or a woman of God who trusted in the Lord. You know, you I mean, take, take the, the children of Israel. You know, who was it, you know, that led them out, you know, of, of Egypt? You know, it was Moses. You know, God had his will, you know, and then he appeared to Moses and told him all the things. And Moses, you know, obeyed and he yielded so that the, the will of God came to pass... You know, you can know and you can understand that God has a will and God has a purpose nearly in, in everything. And even, you know, God's will for your life, it doesn't mean that it's going to be accomplished just because it's his will. Many people leave this earth not having, you know, run their race or finished their course. Many people leave this earth not having done what God had purpose for them to do, not having done what was God's will for them. You know, God purposes it, you know, and, and he, you know, it's, it's his will, it's what he would do. But in so many things, you know, it's, it's up to, you know, the, it's up to the people, you know, concerning, you know, an action or, or such like as that to, you know, just to do what God has given for you to do, to surrender to it and yield to it. You know, just as, you know, Jesus, you know, said, lo, I come to do thy will, O God, so should be the the heart of every person. I come to do thy will. That's what Saul of Tarsus said on the road to Damascus. You know, when Jesus struck him down, he heard the voice from heaven, and he said, what will you have me to do, Lord? You know, he says, what is your will for me? You know, what would you have me do? Over in Matthew, this is the Lord's Prayer. And this is... Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask them. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And here, you know, it's going to go on, you know, or maybe it's in another place where, you know, Jesus really teaches them, you know, to pray. But we see two things here. You know, we see, you know, how Jesus tells us not to pray, and how he tells us to pray. He says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You know, it doesn't, you know, if you, know, you think of the, the heathen, you know, sitting around their campfires, chanting over and over and over, you know, to God. You know, that does nothing, you know, for God. You know, I tell you, you know, sometimes we think, you know, the more that we pray, you know, the more likely God is to answer you know, the more that we ask God for something, the more that he is to do it. You know, it's true. If you, you humble yourself, you know, before God, you know, and seek his face, 
You know, the Lord hears those things. The Lord responds to those things. But simply taking it from a perspective of a matter of volume, it does nothing. You know, just, you know, if a person purposes himself, I'm going to, you know, get down and I'm going to pray for an hour a day. And, you know, they pray that hour a day, but, but their mind's somewhere else, their heart's somewhere else. They're not broken and contrite, as the scripture says, a broken and a contrite spirit he will not despise. You know, it's as if God's, you know, just hearing noise. It says in the Old Testament how God tells, you know, the children of Israel, put away the noise of your songs. Everything that God, everything that they were offering up to God, God just called it noise. And so many times, you know, when, when all we're doing is, you know, praying just for the sake of we feel like we have to pray. You know, check that off the list. Check it off the box. It's just vain repetitions. You know, it, it's, not, it's not gaining you anything. It's not, you know, going to make you receive anything from the Lord. It, it just, just because you do, you know, so much of something, you know, that's not the things that God responds to. You know, I mean, what, what is our impression, you know, of God? Do, do we think that God needs to hear us pray? You know, the scripture says he knows before we even ask. Do you think that it, that it pleases God to see somebody praying there for hours and hours at a time? Do you think that brings God some type of, of pleasure, some type of joy? You know, t- take anything, I- anything that we can do. What does it give to God? What does it offer to God? You know, the answer is, is nothing. You know, the, the scripture says, you know, you know, Jesus saying the Father you know, desires those that worship him in spirit and in truth. True worship with a broken and a contrite heart. True seeking the Lord with a broken and contrite heart you know, does so, you know, infinitely more than just doing what we feel like we have to do. So he says, don't, you know, pray like the heathen do, for they shall think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for the Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. In this 10th verse, thy kingdom come, and really this last phrase, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You know, it speaks of, you know, God having, you know, a will in heaven and in Jesus saying, you know, pray that his will in heaven is done in earth. Now, you know, this may be a very oversimplification, you know, of it, but I see God sitting on his throne. I see God, you know, in, in heavenly places, you know, wherever that is, you know, having a will, having something that he would do, something that he would accomplish, a purpose. You know, when God was, you know, called Paul the Apostle, God never left the throne of, of you, know, you know, of heaven. He never left his throne, but, but he was there in heavenly places and he had his will. Before Paul surrendered to, you know, to the ministry, God had his will for him. But for that will to be done in earth, you know, Paul, you know, must, you know, surrender to Jesus Christ and, you know, and surrender to that holy calling. Can you see the, the difference, you know, I guess you so to say, between what God's will is in heaven and what his will on, you know, for, for earth is? And, well, his will for earth is the same. But all I'm trying to say is that just because God has a will... Just because God has a purpose, he sits on his throne in heaven, and just because he has a purpose doesn't mean it's going to be accomplished. You know, and we see that, you know, in so many different things. But Jesus is saying, saying when you're praying, say, God, you got a purpose in heaven. God, you've you you you're you're up, you're on your throne, you're looking down, you love your children, you care for us, you have a purpose for us. God, let us see that thing come to pass. Let us see that will fulfilled. Let us see all that you would do, God, you know, right here on this earth. God, it's your purpose. You know, now I'm just, you know, you know, pair for going on, you know, speaking of different things. But God, it's your purpose that, that many souls would be saved. God, let us see it here on this earth. God, you know, he, he gives ministries to, to, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to open blinded eyes, you know, all of these things. God, we know that that's your purpose. We know that that's your will. We know that that's what you want. We know that that's what you desire. God, let us see that will here on 
earth. You know, and for, for that will to be accomplished and for that will to be done, there's got to be first, I believe, someone that you know, God has called. You know, for, for, for those ministries, those manifestations of the Spirit... There's got to be that one who God has called, you know, and through them he would fulfill his purpose. Just as, you know, just as like through Jesus concerning our salvation, Paul concerning his ministry, take all the men, you know, and women of the Old Testament, how God had a purpose for them, you know, before he called Gideon, he was ready to deliver Israel. You know, he had his will, he had his, but they weren't delivered. But he called, you know, Gideon and, 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 and told him all the things to do, and his will in heaven was accomplished on earth. We think so often that, you know, well, if it's God's will, you know, it's going to happen. But that's, you know, not the case. You know, for God's, you know, for so many, I think when this man told me that, he was just saying, just give it up. Really, I think that was his subliminal message. Um, But, but, uh, you know, just, just that thinking, that causes you to go home, rest on your couch thinking, well, God's got it in control while, you know, time just passes us by. You know, and whatever it is, you know, for your life, for, for anything, you know, in a, in a very, very broad sense, you know, whatever, you know, God's will is for you, you know, the, it requires that you humble yourself before God. It requires that you yield yourself. And I don't like that word require. I just can't think of a better word right now. Because it is your greatest blessing to yield yourself to the Lord. It is your greatest blessing to surrender fully and completely. But Jesus is saying, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And it makes a distinction between his will in heaven and what is actually accomplished here on earth. The last place I want to go to is in 1 John, the 5th chapter. It says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. And the, you know, the faith teachings, like I said, throw it all out. But they've taken this to say, if we ask anything, you know, according to his will, he heareth us. And if he heareth us, you know, we know that we have the petitions we ask. So you just ask and ask, and they say, believe, you know, that it's the Lord's will. Well, it doesn't matter how much you try to play, try to pray for a Lamborghini. It doesn't matter how much you try to believe that that's the Lord's will, I'm very, very certain that that is not the Lord's will. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're trying to believe that it's His will. doesn't change what His will is. And another thing you know, that, that I was just thinking on, on this scripture of, of so many people, that probably so many people do, and it's just kind of really kind of how I always thought of it, where it says, if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And we think, well... You know, we don't know if it is the will of God or not. We don't know if it's His will. So let's just ask 50-50 chance it's His will and He'll do it. And just when you say it out loud, it sounds a whole lot more foolish. You know, that, you know I don't know if it is, but let's just knock and let's see. You know, but, but that's, I don't believe that that's what you know, you know, Peter you know, or John was speaking you see, John was one of the apostles, you know, and they were the ones, you know, that were going, you know, to, you know, that God had called, you know, to, you know, you know, begin that revival in Jerusalem, you know, and, and, you know, spread it, you know, to the, to the ends of the earth. You know, their way of thinking wasn't, you know, we're going to go out there and maybe God's going to do this. We're going to go out there. Maybe God will hear. Maybe God won't hear. Maybe it's his will. Maybe it's not his will. No, that's, that's not what they were doing. But what they went out, you know, first they had the assurance that the will of God was to see souls saved. You know, and there are many people, you know, that, you know, you, you, you've heard stories of and, and we see and read in the scriptures, you know, of, you know, talking about Paul and all of them that, you know, when they went out, you know, when they did, 
you know, what the Lord had, you know, commanded them to do, you know, they knew that it was the will of God. And their confidence was because they know it's the will of God, they can go out, they can do it, and they can see it come to pass. It wasn't this, we're going to go out and we're going to hope. We're going to go out and we're going to try. We've heard the pastor speak many times, you know, the senior pastor about, you know, how, you know, when you stand in public, you, you don't, you, you, you don't beg God, you don't hope, but how many times that he's spoken to things? I mean, I, I've, and I don't, if he's listening, you know, you know for, forgive me, but how many times that have we seen him, I mean, even speak to the winds, you know, in, in the rains, you know, in a, in a rainy, rainy season just comes to an end. You know, when, when he spoke, when he had the confidence to speak to it, he was able to speak to it. It wasn't that he was lifting up his hands and saying, well, we hope this is going to happen. Let's give this a try. You know, you look at every, you know, I was thinking about, you know, Jesus when he raised Lazarus, you know, from the dead. You know, he, tell, he told me, he said, I'm going to raise him out of his sleep. And they said, Lord, if he sleeps, he doeth, do, doeth well. And he, he just told me, the Lazarus is dead. And, you know, he, they go, you know, and he'd been dead for four days. But I want you to see, you know, the, the boldness of Jesus, when he, when he sees them there, and they're weeping, and they're, they're mourning, and he begins to pray, and he doesn't pray, you know, begging God for something, he doesn't pray, you know, and this is Jesus, you know, I'm certain that the Lord had revealed something to him in this, but he says, yeah, I thank you that you've heard me, he says, I'm not praying for my sakes, he says, I'm praying for them that heard me, them that hear me, you know, it's like a, a sign to them but the, the boldness that he had when he, he knew that this was the will of God. And because he knew that it was the will of God, he knew you know, that, that he, could, he could ask the Lord and that he would see the Lord do it. And that's the same thing you know, that John is saying. If, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If a person knows what the will of God is, you know, they can ask the Lord and see it done. If a person knows, you know, that the, that, that the Lord, you know, would use them to cast out devils, if they're, you know, prayed up, you know, and, and have been seeking the Lord, you know, and, and the, the Spirit of God comes upon them, it's not a chance if that devil is going to go out. It's not a chance happening because they know that it's the will of God. You know, Brother Surf has actually spoken, you know, to that. And he told me, he gave a, a pastor some advice, says the first thing that you got to know is that you have the authority, you know, concern, concerning that. And many people try to, try, to, try to believe it, try to believe it, try to believe that they have the authority. It's, it's never going to work. But for, you know, that I suppose is something that you got to know. You know, and when you know it, you know that it's his will. You can, you know, do what he, you know, leads you to do and you can see it come to pass. The will of God is not some force, you know, that is just going to accomplish everything that we want done. You know, it's, it's not that, you know, we can, you know, it's, it's the will of God and we, well, we'll go pray, you know, in our secret place so no one hears us and, and then God's going go to God, go do it. <clears throat> but if a person knows that it's the will of God, they can step out. They can do what the Lord has given for them to do, and they can see it come to pass. Because it's His will. It's what He's purposed. It's how He would work through you. It's how He would use you, and you've surrendered to Him. You know, His will that's in heaven would now be done on earth. You know, when all those things, you know, you know, come, you know, come to pass. You, you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, obviously, you know, Robin is on my heart, you know, during this whole message. It was on my heart before I got here. Um, it was on my heart throughout the whole day today. And I'll just, you know, go through some things that I've, you know, felt. But it was, I believe it was about a little over two weeks ago when they were going to take her off of the medicine. And... You know, they were going to take her off the medicine on Saturday. And, you know, and 
And it, she was just supposed to pass, you know, hours, you know, a few days maybe. Um, but, but they had artificially, you know, kept, you know, her, were keeping her blood pressure up. You know, that was the, you know, the, how bad it was. My, my dad spoke, he said, I've never seen someone so close to death that's not dead. You know, and I wasn't able to go in and see her and visit her because there was only a certain, you know, amount of people allowed. But, but I remember praying, and I was praying in despair. You know, just, God, I don't know what your will is. God, I don't know what you would do. God, I, I, I but God, you know, if, I, I pray, I say, God, if it's not your will, God, change your will. You know, and... and it just, God, let this be your will. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, and I had to preach the next morning, and that was a, you know, a scary thing, a, a, you know, just, you know, an awful thing, going to bed not knowing if she would, you know, still be here in the morning. You know, that was terrible. But I remember I just praying in desperation. You know, God... You know, I don't know, but God, save her life. God, spare her life. Lord, let it, you know, let, let her, you know, be brought out of this. Let her be raised up. And really, it was, there was no assurance in me, but it was just begging God. It was just desperation. And, and I don't even know how to describe it, but it changed, you know, from begging and, and crying out to the Lord to worshiping God. I still didn't know what his will was. I didn't know what God would do. I didn't know what, it, I didn't know what his plan was. I didn't know if he was going to pass. But the one thing that I did know, you know, that the Lord assured me of was that she was in his hands. And I, I remember I called my dad. He can bear witness to this. I said, that is the best place to be. We don't know what will happen. We don't know what will come to pass. But if she's in the Lord's hands, that is the best place. And no matter what situation any person might be in, you know, the, it's the best place is to be in the Lord's hands. I remember a few years ago, Brother Surface preached a message, you know, on the, the evening sacrifice. You know, and it was, it was like his, you know, he preached it every Sunday or every, every morning of the camp meeting till that final Sunday morning service. And oh, what a powerful service it was. You know, speaking about really the evening sacrifice would be to present your bodies a living sacrifice. And I remember coming to the front, you know, seeking to offer myself, you know, as a living sacrifice. God, what you want to do with me, God, that's up to you. And I don't know how everybody else was feeling, but it was a tough thing on the inside. I looked around at everybody, you know, worshiping and in the, in the presence of God. But for me, you know, it was, it was a tough service. You know, it was a tough thing because I knew what it meant for me to lift my hand and say, God, I present myself a living sacrifice. Just in my case, I knew it meant the Lord might never give me a wife. The Lord might never give me children. You know, the, I, I don't know. I had to give that all. That was hard to do. That was a tough thing to do. But I you know, just surrendered and yielded to him. I said, God, it's yours. And I remember, you know, at the end of the worship you know, the Lord spoke to me, and he says, I will hold your hand. That's been a promise that I've clung to for all these years, that I can give myself to the Lord and know that he would hold my hand. But I was terrified, because I didn't know. There are things that I want, you know, things that, you know, I think that are good, that, you know, that I, I want to have. But I knew the Lord was saying, give it to me, and I didn't know what the outcome would be. But I was driving home, the other day, and, you know, <laughs> nearly in the same state that I'm in now, and I was saying, God, I'd be so terrified not to have it in your hands. You know, what was so hard for me to give up, you know, years ago, I can look back and I say, I made the right decision. I can say I did right. I can say I made the wise choice because I'm in the hands of the Lord and he holds my hand. That's the best place for me to be. That's the place for any person to be. And that was the best place for Robin to be those two weeks. So we didn't know what was going to happen, but we, I knew that she was in the Lord's hands. And whatever happened was his doing. You know, if, and I told my dad this, I said, if she passes you know, they can, the doctors can say all they want. It's not because of the cancer. It's because the Lord took her home. 
And some people might say, I'm foolish for saying that. No, when you're in the hands of the Lord, God is in control of everything. But if He raises her up, you know, you know it's, it's Him that did it because they're in the Lord's hands. So I didn't know what God's will was. I didn't know what His purpose was. I didn't know what He would do, but I knew that she was in His hands. But this day, I don't feel the same way that I felt then. You know, her condition, you know, for a time it got better, you know, and, and she was eating and drinking, but then it started to level out and, and go back down again. You know, but, but I can't even describe it, but, but we knew that we saw a miracle. You know, she was supposed to, she was supposed to die, but here we are two and a half weeks later. And yes, in a very critical state, but we saw what the Lord did. You know, and I, I don't believe that the doctors, you know, that she, she's not going to leave the hospital. You know, the only way for that to happen, they were keeping her blood pressure up artificially with, you know, with adrenaline, you know, putting the, pumping the medicine into her body. You know, but now, you know, and we, we saw how, you know, they, she had no more medicine. She's at home and her blood pressure on its own returned to normal, you know, good levels. And we heard, you know, maybe it was my, you know, dad that said this. He says, we don't know if we re- received the miracle, but we've received a miracle. But I look back, you know, through this whole thing, through everything that's happened, you know, over, I believe it's been almost a year or over a year, you know, how from the, the very beginning, you know, with Brother Surface speaking on it so many times, how the Lord says, you know, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, I will fe- you will fear no evil because thou art with me. You know, how- however it is that it says it. And many different times, you know, we, you would see, you know, the hand of the Lord. You never necessarily see her get better, but you'd see grace given to her. You know, and, and the-, the dreams, you know, that Brother Surface has. You know, and I'll have to say something, you know, it- different than how I believe in God and how I believe in Jesus, but I believe in Brother Surface. Believe in the ministry that God has given him. I believe in the words he speaks. But the words that he speaks, you know, even those, they weren't enough for me to know what the will of God was. But when I saw God stretch forth his hand and bring her out of that hospital, you know, I can't say that I've heard, you know, in an audible voice that God has told me, this is my will. But everything that is within me, I believe that it is God's will that she live, you know, and, you know, such a drastic difference from where I was, you know, two weeks ago of not knowing what the Lord's will is, you know, but we had saw her go down and down and down and never saw the Lord bring her back up, but we saw the Lord, you know, do a great thing, you know, and, you know, bring her out of that hospital, and to me, I take that as a sign of what God's will is. I take that as a sign of what God would do. And there's so many people, you know, like I said, in the faith, when they say, well, just confess it, just believe that it's the will of God, you know, and believe, believe, believe it. That's not what I'm doing. The Lord spoke, you know, to me years ago. You know, uh, it was after, you know, a a time of seeking the Lord, you know, and I was determining, you know, what do I want to do? What, what direction do I want to go with the ministry? You know, as, you know, what kind of question is that? You know, what direction do I want to go? But the Lord spoke to me at the end of that time of seeking Him, and He says, to whom much is given, much is required. If you don't do what I've given you to do, much blood will be required at your hands. And that put a fear in me. You know, that if I don't, you know, do what the Lord's given me to do, I'm going to answer for it. You know, and I know that I answer for every word, you know, I speak and I answer for every word that the Lord's giving me to speak that I don't speak. You know, and I can't say that the Lord has told me specifically to do this is what I feel on the inside. But all I'm saying is that these are not things that I say lightly. It's not something that I'm just saying, oh, well, we're just going to try to believe this. This is what I, you know, believe, you know, you know. You know, I can't say that I've heard an audible voice, you know, that it is his will, but I just don't believe anything else. I don't, I, I, I can't, I don't know how to say it. She's, she's gotten worse and worse and worse, and I was talking to my dad today, I said, but I just don't believe it. 
You know, and people might call me foolish for that, but I said, this is the stand that I'm taking, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that stand. That's not a boast in me. That's not, you know, there's nothing I can do, nothing any of us can do, you know, but to, to call out to the Lord. But I go through this whole message to explain, you know, what the will of God is, you know, and, and how the Lord works. And coming back to First John, the fifth chapter, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions desired of him. You know, and I understand that this is putting myself way on out there. I understand that. I know how it sounds. I know how it seems. I know how everybody, you know, especially in the medical field, will look at me. They'd say, you're crazy. I thought of the scriptures about Paul says, speaking to the Corinthians, he said, we are fools, but you are wise. And so many people thought, you know, Paul to be a fool, you know, and he just says, you know, we're fools. And people have taken that, say, well, we're fools for Christ's sake. You know, and I, I, you know, I, have, I don't believe we're fools for Christ's sake. I don't believe anybody would, should want to be a fool for Christ's sake. But there are those times that, that you got to just do what you feel like you have to do, even if it means everybody's going to think you're a fool. And I told my dad today, I said, maybe a better word for this day and age would be idiot. Even if everybody thinks that I'm an idiot for it. Because of how hopeless it is. How hopeless that it sounds. But I, told, I was telling my dad today, I, I can't believe anything else. I, I, just, I just can't believe anything else. It's not something that I'm trying to do. That's why I say, got no confidence in myself. I've just seen what God did bring her out. I've seen, you know, and, and heard of the things that the Lord has spoken to Brother Surface. And I just can't believe anything else. One thing my dad has always told me, we've heard it from you know, times in the pulpits, but it's just God doesn't play games. You know, and certainly that's not enough to base this whole thing on, but I know that God doesn't play games. God doesn't do something you know, to get us thinking one way when he's really going to do the other. God doesn't play games. And that's why I say when I see what the Lord did in that hospital, when I saw the hopelessness of it, you know, and, and, and you know, heard about it, we knew that that was the Lord. We knew that that was God. And so a few weeks ago as I stood begging and asking God because I don't know what the, Lord, the Lord's will was, today I stand and say, God, I believe I know what your will is. I believe I know what you've purposed. The scripture says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hear us. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of. And as I said, you know, before the end of this service, we're going to gather around you know, and pray for Robin. You know, and I know I'm not, I can't tell anybody how to pray. But I would call, you know, everybody who would stand with me, who believes that this is the will of God. You know, not trying to believe, but those, you know, who believe. Because, you know, it's, you know, it, it, it's no offense if you, I, I don't know that it's any offense if you don't believe it or, or what, but it's not something that you can try to do. It's not something that you can try to make happen. It's not something that you can conjure up. But if you believe that this is the will of God, I would ask you to come forward, gather, not all across the front, but let's gather in. You know, I'm not saying super close, but gather in near. And not beg God to do it. Not beg God to do a work, but ask God to do a work according to His will. Ask Him to do a work according to that which He's purposed. Ask him to give her strength according to his purpose. Ask him to give her, you know, uh, appetite according to his will. Ask him, you know, to give her a good digestive system according to his will. Ask him, 
to get rid of you know, the bed sores according to his will. Everything that needs to be done, God, according to your will. And when you ask, begin by asking for God to send the Holy Ghost to do according to his will. Father.